everyone. Um, this is going to be part two of my Penguin English Library, uh, Penguin English Library collection uh, videos, and I talked about all of the books in my collection that I have read in part one, except for uh, five uh, that I need to talk about in the beginning of this one because I ran out of time. Um, but these are all in the same series. Uh, which is, these are the first five books in the Barsetshire um, series by Anthony Trollope, and I feel it very safe to say that this is my favorite adult series of books. Um, my favorite children's series is Harry Potter, my favorite YA series is The Principles of Love by Emily Franklin, and this is very decidedly my favorite series of books. Um, for adults. Um, so uh, I will show you all of them and read you the backs. I think I read all of the backs, back summaries, and even though this is a series, um, the backs don't spoil any of what happens in the previous books. So the first one is The Warden, and this says Trollope's Riddy. Riddy. Uh, Trollope's witty satirical story of a quiet cathedral town shaken by scandal as the traditional values of Septimus Harding are attacked by zealous performers and ruthless newspapers, um, is a drama of conscience that pits individual integrity against worldly ambition. In The Warden, Anthony Trollope brought the fictional, uh, fictional county, I'm sorry, of Barsetshire to life, peopled by a cast of brilliantly realized characters that have made him among the supreme chroniclers of minutia, I can never say that word when I read it, um, of Victorian England. Uh, so yeah, this was really good. Um, it wasn't my favorite in the series, but um, I think I enjoyed it a lot more than other people did. Uh, so yeah, I just, I really liked this one because it's what made me fall in love with Trollope's writing because it's just so good. Next is Bar Chester Towers, which, uh, I love this cover. I think it is super pretty, um, with the colors. Uh, so I'll read you this one. It says, uh, Trollope's comic masterpiece of plotting and backstabbing opens as the Bishop of Barchester lies on his deathbed. Soon a pitch battle breaks out over who will take power, involving, among others, the zealous reformer Dr. Prouty, his fiendish wife, and the unctuous, unctuous, is that his? unctuous schemer Obadiah Slope. Uh, Barchester Towers is a one of the best love novels in Trollope's Chronicles of Barsetshire series, which captured 19th century provincial England with wit, worldly wisdom, and an unparalleled gift for characterization. Totally true. Um, and this is definitely one of my favorite books in the series. Um, I would say this one and the next two are my three favorites, but my favorite of the three is probably the next one that I will show you. So the next one is Dr. Thorne. Um, this is the third book in the series and hands down my favorite. I don't think, even when I read Last Chronicle of Barset, which I'm hoping to start in the beginning of February, I don't think uh, any of the other books will surpass this one as my favorite. I think it is solidly in first place. Um, and I also really, really love the miniseries that came out, um, I want to say in 2016, but it could have been last year. Maybe it was last year. Anyway, I'll read you guys the back of this one. Um, it says, Dr. Thorne, considered by Trollope to be the best of his works, totally agree, um, is a telling examination of the relationship between money and morality. It recounts the story of the son of a bankrupt landowner, Frank Gresham, who is intent on marrying his beloved Mary Thorne, despite her illegitimacy and apparent poverty. Frank's ambitious mother and haughty aunt are set against the match, however, and push him to make a good marriage to a wealthy heiress. Only Mary's loving uncle, Dr. Thorne, knows of the fortune she is about to inherit, but believes that she should be accepted on her own terms. Yeah, it is so, so good. I love it. 
Uh, next up is Framley Personage, which is another in the series that I very much love and another cover that I quite enjoy. Um, and this one says, a brilliant depiction of social climbing and scandal. Uh, Framley Personage tells the story of Mark Robarts, a young clergyman with ambitions beyond his small country part parish of Framley. In a naive attempt to mix in influential circles, he makes a financial deal with a disreputable local member of parliament, but is instead brought to the brink of shame and ruin. One of Trollope's most enduringly popular novels, Framley Parsonage, is an evocative portrayal of country life in 19th century England, told with great compassion, humor, and an acute insight into human nature. Yeah, it's awesome. And then here is the last one, um, Small House at Allington, which, as you can tell, is a bit different, and that is because um, the paperbacks quickly were going out of print. And for some reason, this is the only, um, like this series are the only Penguin English Library editions that uh, the company then decided to republish in these really beautiful hardcover editions. I don't know why they haven't done these done this with like all of their um, Penguin English Library editions that are going out of print. Um, but anyway, uh, these are also designed by Coralie Bickford Smith, um, very much in the same vein, shall we say, as these, um, but just in hardcover basically. Uh, this is the fifth one in the series, and I will read you the summary. Um, it says, in this lively, intimate portrayal of country so county society, excuse me, uh, Trollope introduces two of his most endearing heroines, the spirited, in the spirited, independent-minded Lily and Belle Dale, who live with their widowed mother. As one sister is betrayed by the ambitious man she adores, while the other must confront her reluctance to let any man near her heart, Trollope weaves together an intricate story of thwarted love, self-deception, and social climbing. The Small House at Allington brilliantly dramatizes the ways in which personal dilemmas are affected by worldly pressures. Um, I enjoyed this one, but I probably enjoyed it the same as The Warden, I think. Um, I just didn't, it wasn't to me on the same level as the middle three that I just thoroughly enjoyed. And then I don't have the last one because I'm currently uh, using my library copy to read that and I'm hoping to get um, this edition of the last one, The Last Chronicle of Barset, uh, as soon as I have an extra $16 to spare. So, yep. Okay, now on to all of the ones that I haven't read. Hopefully I can, um, I don't think I'll be able to get them all into one video, so I think I will just start them and then I will do a third video um, with the last part of my unread Penguin English Library books. Um, it sounds like I'm saying I got them from the library when I didn't. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so we have... Um, Evelina by Frances Burney, and I'm sorry for the kind of reflection, but it is quite pink. Um, and I love this cover, and I'm very excited to read this one. It says, uh, in this comic and sharply incisive satire of excess and affectation, beautiful young Evelina falls victim to the rakish advances of Sir Clement Willoughby on her entrance to the world of fashionable London. Colliding with the manners and customs of a society she doesn't understand, she finds herself without hope that she should ever deserve the attention of the man she loves. Frances Burney's first novel brilliantly sends up, sends up, um, 18th century society and its opinions of women, while enticingly depicting its delights. Uh, so yeah, this sounds really fun, I think. It sounds like it'll be very comical, um... So that was that one. And then we have a lot of Charles Dickens books. Um, yeah. So first is the one in this pile that I am most looking forward to reading, and that is Little Dorrit. Um, 
I love this cover with the DNF on it, which having seen the mini series, which is one of my favorite mini series ever, um, definitely in my top five, uh, I know what this means, but I don't want to say anything about it because that would give things away. Um, and then I'll read you the back. Uh, it says, a masterfully, a masterly evocation of the state and psychology of imprisonment, Little Dorrit is one of the supreme works of Dickens's maturity. When Arthur Clennam returns to England after many years abroad, he takes a kindly interest in Amy Dorrit, his mother's seamstress, and in the affairs of Amy's father, a man of shabby grandeur, long imprisoned for debt in the Marshalsea. As Arthur discovers, the dark shadow of the prison stretches far beyond its walls to affect many lives, from Mr. Panks, the reluctant rent collector of Bleeding Heart Yard, to Myrtle, a unscrupulous financier. Um, so, yes, I'm very much looking forward to reading this because of how much I love the miniseries. Next is... The Old Curiosity Shop by Charles Dickens. Um, I'll stop saying they're by Charles Dickens because the rest of these, not the rest of them, but the next four are all by him. Um, and I really love this cover with the cards. Uh, this one says, Dark and dreamlike, the old curiosity shop is filled with unforgettable, grotesque characters. Quilp, a demonic dwarf who eats eggs in their shells and drinks boiling rum. A loving grandfather with a terrible gambling addiction. Frail but loving Nell and her wicked brother Frederick, corrupt, abusive lawyer Samson Brass, and good-hearted hero Knit, Knit, <laughs> Kit Nubbles. Uh, famously one of Dickens's most moving tales, The Old Curiosity Shop is also one of his strangest and most memorable. Um, so yes, I'm very excited to read this, but also a little bit hesitant because I now know a major spoiler from it, um, that I found out maybe about a month ago, and I'm sorry about the planes, um, and it just, it's made me not nearly as excited, um, but I still am looking forward to reading it. Okay, next we have The Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens, which was his first ever um, work, and I love this cover. I love the colors. I love the cricket bats and balls. I think that is fantastic. Um, and as you can tell, I did start to read this, but I made the mistake of starting this too close to a different uh, Dickens work. Um, Katie from Books and Things and I were buddy reading Oliver Twist, and I started this like a week before, which was very dumb. Um, and I got 200 pages into it. And then we started Oliver Twist. And when I finished Oliver Twist, I was a little bit, um, I needed to read something different from Charles Dickens. And I just ended up picking up a different Dickens instead of picking this back up um, months later. So anyway. Uh, so this says, The Pickwick Papers, uh, 24-year-old Dickens's joyful rum rumbustious debut uh, made him an overnight sensation. The collected anecdotes from the fictional Pickwick Club, whose members include the poet Snodgrass, the romantic Tupman, Winkle the sportsman, and the relentlessly cheerful Pickwick, along with his immensely popular cockney sidekick Sam Weller, take readers from the comic delights of the cricket club to debtor's jail by way of drunkenness, feasting, and the immortal fat boy. Um, so yeah, I think that I will enjoy this when I do read it. Um, I'm hoping to read this with Amanda Jenner um, sometime this year because we had mentioned that we want to read it together, so um, I just realized I think my light burned out, but anyway that's beside the point. Um, so yeah, um, I'm very much looking forward to reading this one. Um, and I think I will stop here because the light is getting kind of weird and, um, I am almost at the 15 minute mark. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the second part of my collection. Um, any of these books, uh, let me know if you've read them, if they're some of your favorites, if you don't really like them. Um, and stay tuned for now what is going to be part three, because uh, I have 
a little stack left. So anyway, um, see you for part three, and thank you so much for watching. Bye.